everyone. This is Lynn Wilson with Lynn Wilson Originals. And today we're going to continue our work on upholstering this chair. Um, welcome to my channel and I hope that you find it helpful and remember to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new videos when they appear. What we're going to work on is upholstering the seat of this antique East Lake chair. And I recommend this type of chair for somebody who is just getting started in, in upholstery because it has this wooden frame and um, it makes it a little bit easier. You're not dealing, um, you're being able to staple right into the frame. So without further ado, here are some of the tools that um, are helpful for upholstery. This is a staple remover and I like this one, it has really pointy tips to get under the staples. Um, you might want to wear leather gloves while you're practicing because I have jabbed myself with this. A pair of pliers to pull out your staples. Very sharp um, fabric scissors. Don't let your husband use this on anything else. And a staple gun. So I got this off of Amazon. The brand is Freeman and it was not particularly expensive. You can spend a lot of money on staple guns and I just haven't done that yet. So the first thing I did, I have already upholstered the back, the top of these chairs. I have two that I'm working on. And so I've already done the back and then on the reverse, there's also a panel. And now I'm getting ready to do this seat. So the first thing I've done is lay, put a layer of thick cotton batting. This I purchased either from a company called Genco Supplies or my local fabric store that sells upholstery material. And it comes in this huge roll. <laughs> and you want to keep it rolled up and tied because it kind of expands. And the first time I bought a roll, I didn't do that. And all of a sudden this thing just started growing. Um, so this, um, you cut a piece out and I save the, um, pattern from what I take off because this will help me. I lay it on the, the, um, padding or the batting to get the right size. And I also use it as my pattern to cut out the, the f bottom of the chair fabric. So this is pretty easy. You just pull it apart to move it around the wood frame. And I put this extra layer on because this is the original and it just gets worn through the years. So the nice thing about this is it doesn't have to be super precise, but you want to keep it even. A lot of upholstery is about feel. Um, you'll notice, you know, this is completely smooth. It feels smooth to my hand. I'm not piecing together smaller pieces of this because that's what's going to be felt when you're sitting in the chair. Um, and then we're good on this side and we're good on this side when you actually start stapling you want to be sure that you're not stapling into your batting because it'll be hard um, <clears throat> when you finish you're going to cut your your fabric and you don't want any of this sticking out so i'm just going to make a double check here get rid of some of this extra bulk. Yeah, the important places to have it is in the seat, any place where there'll be contact. So your legs would go over here. So you do want, you want it to come down over the edge but I don't want it to get in the way of my stapling. So now this is the part that gets people nervous when it gets me nervous 
when you have to start making cuts in your fabric. First thing I want to do is make sure that I've got this pattern matching. So I try to find something, you know, one piece in here that I can focus on and make sure it's going in the same direction on this piece. So let's see. I found one before. But this, this little piece here. There it is. <clears throat> And we've got this piece here. So I'm headed in the right direction. You want your fabric to continue up. With this, um, this is such a busy pattern, it probably wouldn't make a difference if I, you know, switched it up. So you're gonna lay your fabric down and start, here is where you're gonna make a cut. right here to go around this piece and then you'll make a cut back here. So the first thing that I like to do is make sure that I've got enough fabric to go around. And for some reason when they did this chair, normally you would staple into here, but they ended up stapling, the person who did it before me stapled underneath, and I think it's because there was this crack. And I filled it with wood filler to make it more sturdy. But yeah, I have enough to go underneath. So the first thing I do is I like to secure my fabric just with one staple in the front. Making sure it's straight. And I apologize in advance if my generator goes off. It, this is powered by, um, it's not a generator, it's a compressor. Um, this is powered, it's one horsepower, three gallon Craftsman. Um, I don't even know what you call these things. Anyway. So I'm going to get a staple in here, and it doesn't have to be super tight. A way to um, put your staples in, if you're thinking you might end up taking it out, is at an angle like this, because that gives you some space to get your staple remover right underneath there. Because right now we're just trying to hold the fabric in place. And... Your first cut, I always do the sides first. You want to go right into the middle of this piece here, um, this frame. And a trick, if you're nervous about making that cut, is to just take another piece of fabric, fold it back, and practice your cut. So what did I do with my scissors? Let's see if I can get this so that you've got a good angle here. Um, so you're going to go right to the middle. And what you can do, when you think you're close, you're going to make a little V cut, right like that. And right now, I know I'm way too far out. And you can see here. But I like to kind of inch up on it especially when I'm using a client's fabric. So you just kind of inch up closer and closer until you feel like you're gonna be able to get it in tight. And so I would, if I wanted to keep practicing, I would just um, keep getting closer and closer here. Now, I am actually gonna get some scissors that are smaller. These are great for cutting out your pattern, but you can see they're kind of big when you need to do detailed work right up close. So I'm just gonna grab another smaller set so I have more control. Again, I've got these labeled as my upholstery scissors so they don't get used on paper. So I'm gonna snug my fabric up 
and start inching towards the center. And then make a little V. And I will start with a small V because I know I can make it bigger. And see how that is fitting. So I'm pretty happy with that cut right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and make this cut. So again, like I said, if you want to practice, you can just fold up a piece of material and practice your cut on the material. So now again, I'm going to fold my fabric back. and go to the middle of this piece of wood. I've gotten a little bit better about judging how close to get. And make a little V. pull my fabric around. So both those cuts look good. So now I'm going to my back corners. And again, what you're going to want to do is fold your fabric. This time you're going to kind of fold it on a diagonal right into the corner here. Let me see if I can pull this closer. So I'm um, shooting for this edge because I'm going to wrap my piece around that corner. And so for this cut, I'm going to go in at a diagonal. I'm not going to go straight on because I'm shooting for that corner. to start with. And so I'm too far away right here. I'm getting a lot of wrinkling and excess fabric. So I've got to get it in a little bit closer. You just go by, you know, quarter of an inches, quarter of an inch at a time. The backs are a little bit more challenging than the fronts. All right, so I'm thinking that that's going to work for me. And the other thing you can do is you can put a little extra padding, a little of the extra foam batting to fill in. And likewise, if you find that you've cut too close here and the batting is, sho is showing, just take some of the batting out. And this is a pretty forgiving fabric. It always helps to use true upholstery fabric. When I did my very first chair, I bought, um, it's called home decor fabric, but it's not as thick as upholstery fabric and it really makes the job more difficult. So again, I'm going to go in to this corner post right here.
I think that cut is going to work as well. Now what I want to do is go ahead, push this fabric through. And I've cut it really close here. So I am going to take out some of my batting. And so now what I'll do is go around and staple down these sides. But I thought I'd show you the cuts. And um, if you have any questions, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'd love to help you in any way I can. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.